I'm Albert Chu, and I will talk about manipulation tax and local differential privacy. This is joint work with Adam Smith and John Allman. In local differential privacy, users take it upon themselves to ensure their privacy. They compute randomized messages using their data and send these messages to an aggregator. The aggregator recovers the mean or classifier or some other information from the messages. Because the users want privacy, each message should not reveal much information of the user who made it. It is by now well known that sending private messages can only lead to worse estimates than trusting the aggregator to privatize. But now work, we consider a different flaw of the model. In our threat model, the goal of an adversary is to skew the aggregator's output. The adversary controls a gamma fraction of the users who report arbitrary messages. The rest of the users are honest and run the local randomizer. The aggregator computes on all messages. Our work shows that only a small gamma is necessary to control the aggregator's output. Attacks in this model were considered in prior and concurrent work. But in our work, we expose that powerful attacks are inherent in the model. The output of any locally private protocol can be manipulated by corrupt users in such a way that the error grows with the privacy level and domain size. We also show that optimally robust protocols exist. No attack can do more damage to them than our attack. The core example is distribution estimation. If we get data from a distribution and we want to estimate it in the L1 norm, corrupt users can introduce error at least as large as square root D over epsilon. To be more precise of our definitions, we're going to focus on randomizers that are epsilon locally private, which means that any pair of inputs results in a pair of output distributions that are close up to an epsilon factor. By this, I mean the distributions are multiplicatively close point-wise. The closeness factor is e to the epsilon, but we'll think of this as 1 plus epsilon. We'll treat epsilon as a value less than 1 to simplify presentation, but our results hold for larger epsilon as well. As I said before, there are gamma corrupt users, and then we show that their influence on any estimation protocol scales of root d over epsilon. Prior work focused on specific protocols, randomized response and work by Ambanus, Jacobson, and Lipma, and Miranda Noor, then histograms and heavy hitters by Cao, Jia, and Gong. Our work gives attack against any protocol for this problem. One attack that you may consider is input manipulation. This applies to any protocol in any model, and a gamma fraction can introduce only gamma error. On the other hand, our attacks are tailored to local DP and get worse with dimension and privacy guarantee. The core idea of our attack is the following observation. An accurate aggregator must be sensitive to small changes in the message distribution. So to set up, we'll draw the set of data distributions as a circle. Now suppose there are two distributions on data that are far apart. For example, uniform over some set or far from uniform. Ideally, the protocol is good at estimating distributions. So its estimates should live in these two regions close to the true distributions. But the aggregator in a local protocol does not operate on the raw data. It instead gets messages from a local randomizer and the definition of local privacy means that the two input distributions must be mapped close together in this message distribution space. So in order to be accurate, the aggregator has to be sensitive to the signals from the messages. We'll exploit this sensitivity in our attacks. 
crop users will send messages that shift this distribution. To make this more concrete, let's explore binary mean estimation. Here, everyone has a signed bit drawn from Radamaka mu, and we'd like to know mu under local privacy, where Radamaka mu is the distribution over plus minus one with mean mu, and mu uniquely identifies the distribution. The standard solution for locally private mean estimation is randomized response. Here, each user flips their bit with probability close to half. The aggregator collects the messages and can compute an unbiased estimate. A baseline attack is to just change the inputs to the randomizer. This incurs error gamma, so no useful estimate if gamma is large, like 1 half. But notice that this aggregator is rescaling by epsilon. This means that when a corrupted user sends a message that is fixed to be plus one, it gets inflated to one over epsilon. That means a gamma fraction of users introduces gamma over epsilon error. So we have no useful estimate if gamma is near epsilon, not near a constant like before. Our work shows that every locally private solution for this problem, not just randomized response and not just this aggregator, has this level of vulnerability. To prove this theorem, we will focus first on randomized response, but with an arbitrary aggregator. We will generalize to other randomizers later on. We will construct two worlds in one world, there are no corrupt users, and the mean of data is some mu. In the other world, a gamma fraction are corrupt, and the mean of user data is zero. Because data is binary, we'll visualize our distributions as points on a number line. Notice that when we have accurate estimates, we can distinguish the two worlds. These sets are disjoint. Our goal is to attack the protocol in a way that makes distinguishing impossible, which in turn means error must be at least mu over two. It has to be large. Let's consider world one, an honest execution. The data is drawn IID from a distribution of mean mu, and it's not difficult to show that the message from any user is a bit with mean epsilon times mu local privacy contracts the mean towards zero. For reasons that will become clear, we will choose mu to be gamma over two epsilon, so that the message distribution has mean gamma over two. Now let's consider world two, a corrupted execution. The mean here is zero, so honest users like user n, will send messages with mean zero. Our adversary will corrupt each user independently with probability gamma over two. This has the effect of corrupting a most gamma fraction, a very high probability. So these corrupted users all execute m, and this m strategy is just output message plus one. So the corrupt distribution has mean plus one, as opposed to mean zero. But a corruption that happens with probably gamma over two. So this means any message in world two has mean gamma over two. But this is exactly the same distribution as in world one. This means no test can distinguish the two worlds. And in turn, no aggregator can have overly accurate estimates. To handle other randomizers, we will essentially reduce the randomized response. This is done by using the following lemma by Carus, O, and Bismuth. 
Any locally private randomizer can be expressed as a post-processing P of randomized response. Before, we just flipped a bit of some probability, but now, more generally, we will run P on the flipped bit. To attack randomized response, corrupt users send plus one. In the more general case, corrupted users will send P of plus one. The proof directly carries over. So we have shown that every locally private protocol has manipulation error gamma over epsilon in the binary case. Randomized response gives a matching upper bound to this result. When the dimensionality is d, we want to show that the error now scales with root d. So there's no useful estimation if an epsilon over root d fraction is corrupted. As with the binary case, the lower bound is tight, there is a protocol whose error is at most root d over epsilon. We will adapt our original attack to larger dimensions. Because messages are not always one-dimensional, we will instead use a ball to visualize the set of all possible message distributions. R of 1 will be one point in this ball, where R of 1 is the message distribution when the input is 1. Same for R2, R3, and so on until R of D. We can also define R of U, which is the distribution of the message when the user has a uniformly random value. Local privacy means that all of the randomizer's message distributions are all epsilon close to R of U. These distributions need to be similar to be private. So how does our attack work? We proved the following lemma. There is a special distribution G that is far from being the uniform distribution, but the message distributions R of G and R of U are close. They are epsilon over root D close together. After finding this G, the adversary adapts the attack from the binary case. Specifically, we consider two worlds. In one world, the data is drawn from a mixture between U and G. In the other world, the data is drawn from uniform. Due to privacy, the message distribution in the first world experiences contraction, while in the second world, messages from honest users have distribution R of U. And the corrupted users shift the message distribution to that of the first world. The special property G has is that the message distribution R of G is epsilon over root D close to R of U. This construction directly parallels the randomized response construction, where if the closeness is epsilon L, then the error is 1 over epsilon L. Now, back to our high dimensional attack, this epsilon L term is actually epsilon over root d. So now our error has this root d term. To sum up, we've shown that attacks are more powerful with stronger privacy and bigger dimension. If implementations require local DP, attention should be paid to the optimum protocols we identify in our paper. Otherwise, other models hold promise. We could simulate centrally private algorithms with secure multi-party computation. As a special case of that, we can consider the recent shuffle and secure aggregation models. There has not been as much research into manipulation attacks in these two models, at least as much as in the local model. So it is right for investigation. This concludes the talk. Thank you for watching.